What's up, y'all? Welcome. What's up? Hey, um, what I'm working on today is atmosphere. So, um, I am going to be playing with some functions of fmod where you can create a reverb instance and then apply that instance to whatever you want. Like your, your, all your channels, all your, all your sound effects that are playing, you can like apply any kind of, well, I think it's just, you, there's some parameters for it and stuff. Let's find out. I was just looking at this on my iPad. There it is. Set reverb properties. And there was another site or another one. Um, yeah, I create the reverb instance there. All right, so we can create some reverb properties. And then, okay, there's a bunch of them. So we should probably just start with a preset and be a little bit easier. But when I get to it, I'll play with decay time, early delay, late delay, HF reference, I don't know what this stuff is. Diffusion, density, low shelf, very nice. High cut, awesome. Wet level, sweet. This looks like a really nice reverb and I'm pretty sure it's nice and simple so it doesn't eat up too much CPU. This way, you can when you're inside a cave, there could be some little bit of echo, just a tiny bit, not too much. When you're outdoors, there'll be nothing, so it'll sound like an outdoors. <laughs> If you're inside a sewer pipe, you can make it sound like a sewer pipe. Let's get one of those to start with, and I'll apply it to the master channel. Yo, Zyinger, what's up, man? Howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm working on reverb right now. Well, I'm creating atmosphere, and the first thing to try is to add a little bit of reverb, like, you can give it kind of a tinny sounding reverb when you're near metal, where you're inside a metal place like the ship or the the final dungeon. Um, and then in most of the other ones, they're they're made out of stone, so it'll have like a, it'll definitely have an echo, but it'll be less. And then even in the in the fire dungeon, there'll probably be some sort of like anti reverb, like almost like muffling going on because the heat is so strong, it's eating up the sound. So. Got to code some stuff up here to set up some reverb instances. Mm, this is the, here we go, here's fmod. All right, fmod stuff. So do I want to keep these around, the reverb properties? Oh yes, okay, I do. All right, right, right. So we got static F mod reverb properties. <laughs> nice, nice. Not only was it nice, but it's nice that you used the pun. Uh, Fmod preset sewer pipe? Okay, what's this? Is there like a default? Oh yeah, preset off. Sweet, so it's like the wetness is negative 80. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't. I don't know how I did. I normally never ever recognize puns. I don't know why, I'm just like, uh. Okay, so reverb prop zero is gonna be the default. Props one. This is where we're gonna do like cave. Oh wait, this could be just an array.
What do we got here? Stone room. That'd be nice for dungeons, probably. Here, we got one for cave. Wow. Let's see what cave sounds like. What's this one? Stone room. And we need like a metallic one. Sewer pipe, maybe. City, uh, maybe. Underwater, sweet, there's an underwater one. Okay, so I need these to correspond to some um, some enums. Basically, let's just create a few so I can use this elsewhere in the game. And uh, I guess that should be part of Kit, actually. Sound types. Wait, am I using fade types here? Damn. So fade type isn't defined till later. Oh. All right, cool. So we'll create a type that basically represents different kinds of atmosphere. Um. This is actually a reverb type. Cool. So we got a reverb type and K reverb none is the default. K reverb um, none would also be the overworld. Well, I guess the overworld. Well, I guess it wouldn't be the overworld, it's just outdoors. That might be slightly different than none at some point, so make it its own one. Outdoors, we got a cave. Um, there's dungeon. Wait, oh, I guess all the dungeons should have their own. Yeah, totally, because the floaty dungeon will have its own. Yeah, all of these need to have their own individual. Damn. Uh, I guess I'll, I could create the preset. Okay, so I create a type here. And then just apply. Okay, apply it at runtime. Dungeon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, I'll do it. Okay, so yeah, I can I can create some kind of way to. Um, set those properties and stuff. I'll I'll find out. As I do this, but anyways, let's get that compiling. So we've got some re some reverb types. Oh, oh, before I do that, I should definitely get some functions for that too. So it's kind of a global thing. So we'll call it set. Um. 
set reverb properties. for reverb type and then that would be given uh, see this is the thing I don't know yet okay so but anyways we, we can set the reverb type at least I know I'll need that function. Okay, so let's get that compiling. Got a set reverb type function to fill in. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Damn it. All right, so we need a constant to represent how many there are. And you notice I'm not using, I'm not putting this into the end of the array like is done. You see done a lot. You know, a, piece, a person will put an enum for the how many many types are at the end. That's kind of a nice thing to do because it's automatic, and that way it usually, as long as you're starting from zero, you're gonna have a, a good number there. But the one downside is that that all of a sudden means that the value of the number of types you have is a valid value for this strongly typed enum so that means that basically you could pass that into a function and all of a sudden break your your code or whatever because it's that's a valid type so this is kind of a safer way to do it but in the same sense it has the drawback that if you forget and you change what is the last type then this isn't going to work so And it always makes me think, I'm like, wait a minute, am I doing this right? Because K reverb dungeon A, is that right? This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's index 12, but there's 13 types, so yeah, it is plus 1. Okay, so that's ready to compile. And this will take forever. Whenever I'm streaming, this takes like five minutes or something crazy to recompile. Yeah. Reverb type unknown. What? Where did I put fade type? I forward declared it somewhere. It must have. Huh. For reals, it includes libraries. Guess, oh, profile.h. It's because profile.h. Well, let's just be explicit and forward declare them here. Oops. Okay, so while that's compiling, we get the rest done. We've got a number of reverb types now, so kit sound can specify that many. Okay, so let's just line those up. So we've got none is off, 
Outdoors is going to be something like, I guess it might just be more like city or forest. What are the options again? I think there was forest. Let's do forest is one of them. Okay, so forest is the outdoors. Cave is cave. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start with stone room for all of the dungeons, except for maybe the, I guess the last the last one. I don't know. Okay, we need a variable to hold the reverb type, the current reverb type. Oh, we got a redefinition. Oh, damn it. After all that. Oh, wait. Oh, that was just because I had I had it duplicated here in the CPP. No worries. All right, now we need the set reverb type function. Okay, so we set the reverb type, we get the properties. And then we call, what do we call? Oh yeah, set reverb properties. I think I want to do if if mod studio equals null pointer return false or just return should be a given. I think it's f mod low that needs to be called. Let me check that. F mod low is an f mod system. Yeah, that's right. And it gets all initialized and stuff. Oh, and then I to reference it or whatever I use these. Where are these check result functions? There we go, if f mod fail.
Okay, so that would be error setting reverb properties. And if that happens, just return. That's basically all we need to do for this function here. Oh, and also, yeah, make sure that um, the the group of sounds, um, I guess it would be both the looping and the other sounds. Okay, so both the, the channel groups. Yeah, the loop group and the, oh, what's the other one? It's not the music group, it's... Oh, the default group, that's right. Hmm. Can you get the FMOD default channel group? I think I might have to start using it like a master group. So that you can get the, some effects on it. So we'll create a master group. Oh wait, there already is a master channel group? Oh, what? Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, oh. So we don't need to create it. It's already there. And we're going to, instead of getting it into mat, this variable called, this temporary variable called master channel group, we'll just get it into. our variable fmod master group oh and i think since the Hopefully that mass, this master group thing works here as intended. Okay, so let's make sure there's no other uses of like the loop group. Ah, okay, here we go. And sound engine needs to remove it, of course. I think that's all. Okay, cool. Now, the last thing, the reverb function, when it sets the reverb, we need to call to set the reverb wetness or whatever.
What was that at? Set this is the channel control. Set reverb properties. Channel set reverb properties. Uh, okay, so the, on the channel instance is zero. We're always going to use instance zero. Tommy Killer, what's up, man? How you doing? What's going on? So we're setting the system reverb properties here and the set the channel reverb properties. All good? Yeah, same here, man. I'm having a good time doing some, just adding little artistic touches to Songbringer that I've kind of been either uh, ruminating about for a while or I was just recently inspired by Hollow Knight so much. Like, wow, Hollow Knight is such a great game. It really is. Inspired me so much. I'm like, wow, you know what? There's some cool things I could do, like, to create at more atmosphere in Songbringer. Or to, um, you know, to make the world more interactable and stuff like that. Without changing any of the gameplay, just changing the art only. Like, oh, another thing I was like, wait, they do a really good job of, like, all their... Their uh, particles are amazing in that game. It made me think, how can I use particles better in Songbringer to really bring the art to just like even 2% better, you know? Yeah, the cloud, right, little sparks when you hit the wall. Yeah, I hope those, I hope those help like to make it just feel more like everything can be interacted with and the whole world is just alive. So this is going to be just fmod master group set reverb property zero to, oh, not add props. We want the float wet. So what is the wetness exactly? Right. Okay. So zero is none. One is full. We always want one. Yeah. Yeah, right? Sometimes you get lucky and some of them um, can matter more than others. You know what I mean? Like you can make one little touch and it's like, okay, cool. Things are a little bit better. And then you take, you make this another touch that took you just as long, but that one feels like it, everything is definitely 10% better. You're like, whoa, or this is like better, noticeably better. So some of them matter more than others, but I don't know. Sometimes they they like they are sort of a cumulative cumulative effect, you know, or like compounded. I was trying to code on the internet window again. I'm trying to code the internet. Let's make this explicit too. Um, this is the yeah the reverb instance. Call it that. That way, it's a bit better. And I guess we could name this too. Wetness, it's funny. Funny variable name. Um, if this works, then we've got everything ready. The next step is just to apply the right um, reverb type. So every time we go to a certain Z level, 
like there's render system has its own set attributes that's what it is set attributes render system there's also music system music system there that's exactly what we want to do when the music system sets a new z we'll just change the reverb type So, it would be nice to know the area we can compare style card. Oh, we could just get the style card, right? World get style card, yeah, for Z. Gotcha, bam. All right, so if the style car is C, that's a cave. Um, if the Z is zero, that's uh, reverb outdoors. And if it's a dungeon, I guess we'll need the level Z stored for this. Oh, and I guess the style car should be that too. Or does style car already do that? I don't know. Oh yeah, the style car is the same. okay. That, that works. Level Z. Okay, so if it's a level, then the reverb type equals K. Oh, create a reverb type based on K reverb type or K reverb uh, dungeon one plus level Z minus one. So dungeon one would be a zero offset from that. Okay, so we got the reverb type now. Kit set reverb type. Whew, finally done with that. Okay, so other than being able to set the individual reverb properties for a Z level, this might be somewhat working, and I'm not sure about the master group. Might have to create a separate master group. Let's see, let's just play it and see if there's any kind of reverb at all. Here we go. Diving into the water. <laughs> Crashed. What, we, what happened? Error setting channel reverb properties. DSP connection error. Connected DS. What the hell? Connection possibly caused a cyclic dependency or connected DSPs with incompatible buffer counts. What? I obviously didn't read the manual. Which one was it? It was DSP connection. 
Yeah, that's just. Oh, a cyclic dependency. Some, if I think it is the master group thing. So, let's see if that's it. If instead of shading, setting it on the master group, we'll set it on the loop group. So at least the top hat. We'll hear the top hat doing it, and if if the top hat's working, then that should help. Also, the area ambience will have it, I think, and that's kind of undesirable, actually. Okay. Oh, nice! It worked! The top hat has a, a reverb on it for sure. And I think that means also that the, the ambience you're hearing right now also has a... Oh, wait! sound actually the the sword has it too because the loop group that's part of the loop group okay so let's do this let's do this the um, yeah let's add one more group so we've got a master group and then we've got the the one shot group I guess once is a simpler way to say that. The once group. Okay, so once again, we're going to create a, another group. Create channel. Once group. Fmod. Once group. So we've got one sloop, music, and we're still storing the FMOD master group, even though we're not really ever using it. Oh, we've got to add the once group, though. Okay, and we've also got to, yeah, erase it. All right, now. The group by default, instead of null pointer, which would pass the master group, basically, we're going to do fmod um, once group. This is our, yeah, by default, I'll play to the once group. Otherwise, you're going to override it if it's a loop or if it's a stereo sound effect. All of those need to play through the once. Okay. Now, when we set the, we need to set the channel properties for both the FMOD loop group and the once group. There. Okay. No more cyclic dependency thing, hopefully. And that means all sound effects, including enemies and everything, will have some reverb. And then I can start playing with the parameters so it sounds more Songbringer. Um, I have a certain style, an aesthetic style going with the sounds in that I want the sound to even feel 2D. By using not very much noticeable reverb. So this is a little bit too much reverb, I think. But yeah, this is really cool hearing it on everything. 
really definitely adds atmosphere a lot. We shouldn't be hearing it on any of the music. So, I already really want to customize it, but yes, this is a great start. Nice. I'm checking this in, actually, so far. Good edit. Alright, we got a fade type added, a reverb type. Next up, we're going to be setting reverb properties. Reverb type, non-outdoors cave, yeah, yeah. We added a master group pointer, a once group. This will take some testing. I'll make I'll need to make sure this works perfectly like on Windows and Linux as well. Um, I'm so far I'm pretty confident it will because FMOD's a great engine. <clears throat> right, so we've got a reverb, a current reverb type, the properties for all the reverb types. Create the once group. Get the master channel group into our stored pointer in case we ever need it again. We're creating a once group. Making sure both those pointers are nulled whenever the engine is ended. And then by default, sounds play with the once group instead of the master, which is null pointer. Because we can't set something, we can't set this reverb type on the, the master, it seems, because that creates a cyclic dependency thing. Now, we've set the reverb type, we set whatever it is, in case we ever need to get it. And then set the reverb properties, we get whatever those reverb properties will be for that type set them in the system and then set our two channels the loop group and the once group so that it's using that reverb instance at full wetness and then whenever the music system sets its attributes it also sets the reverb type i wonder how the outdoors one sounds in the cave Oh wait, I mean, a really simple way to change this to what would be more like my preference, I think, would be to just set the wetness down, a quarter of that wetness maybe. before I go changing all the types because I'll know I'll need to set some custom properties anyways and I'll want to list that in my own data file and then load it parse it um, and then apply all that via data okay yeah that's better a quarter of the reverb sounds pretty nice
that's pretty good. Yeah, I guess I could check that in like that. All right, so we'll call that added reverb types. That's a good start. Now to customize them a little bit, I want the wetness at full. And then you'll look at all what's in each one. Okay, so this is kind of hard to read here. Ah, uh, here we go. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna save this for a minute because I got this, I really wanna try um, a sound effect. I'm just thinking of where something that sounds a little bit better when you hit a wall and stuff. Probably pillar, I think. So just like a really truncated version of the pillar, basically. Let's call that wall zero. Or yeah, yeah. Yeah, wall zero is cool. 44, 16 wave, yeah.
Okay, there we got three or four effects. So in um, common, it gives us stat. Oh no, it's actually static. Yeah, static doc text has this hurt, which is called zero. Yeah, this sound effect kind of sucks. So let's just try some of these ones. Oops, what did I do? Let's turn our witness back down to maybe half per second. Um, and I want to not have the ghost sword. So that it's not hitting things twice. So there, now so that reverb should be at a more, a nicer level, I think. And then it should be 0.38 or so. 7.5. Well, anyways, I just have I have a, I have it a little higher than I would want it because I want to hear it clearly. That's nice. Yes. Ah, oh, it's so much of a better sound effect than before. Yeah. So when you're hitting things like pillars, you're destructing them. Like like that one, you're extinguishing its flame. But these. Get a really nice. Okay, so now all the enemies are dead. You can hear. Yeah, it's so much of a better sound. Alright, um, let's check the Songbringer dungeon too and make sure the wall's there sound sound right with that sound effect. I might need a more metallic sound for for this.
I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot, actually. I think let's like take the um, take a look at some putting in some better um, putting in individual um, reverb presets for each one of the dungeons. Like dungeon one should be should stone room is pretty good for that. It seems like um, the dungeon two is gonna be you know, dungeon two is gonna be the floaty one. So that is more of like a like windy mountains definitely oh no that's stone room mountains three is the probably plain would be a well plain yeah or underwater actually might be kind of cool for both of these underwater I think that's both that one let me look at the, the world styles psychedelic in stock car three and yeah stock out three and four and then okay so five is acid all right so the acid dungeon do underwater for those and then acid dungeon is kind of an indoors but it's sandy so it's gonna be like a padded cell almost but it'll also have this sort of a lot of sand so the sand's gonna be more I don't know padded cell might work for it though Um, next one, this is fire, no, ice is six, okay, so ice, stone room, probably, maybe stone corridor, Let's actually put put these out. Stone, floaty, psychedelic. Acid, ice. I think the next one's gonna be fear or fire. Car seven fire. Okay, so fire is also going to be sort of like a a padded thing almost. What did I already do for padded acid? I don't know. Well, let's try this one, I guess. Bad cell again. Next dungeon is car eight. It's going to be, oh, that's the ship. And then nine is fear. And 10 is a tower. Okay, so fire. Ship is gonna be like ah uh, yeah so sewer pipe probably is good for the the tower and the ship and then the fear dungeon is also gonna be like stone again like a stone room or maybe something else kind of weird what do we got arena hangar those are both just so huge it's not gonna be a huge sounding maybe a carpeted hallway would work for um, the fire dungeon. <laughs> Let's try this all out. This is fun. Okay. 
What do we start with? Let's go to Fear Dungeon. that hittable. So that one's carpeted. Hallway, I'm thinking padded cell. Oh, oh I mean, no, wait, no, I'm in the fear. I'm in the stone room. Oh, no wonder. Let's rebuild that again. Alright, let's go to Fire Dungeon. I want this one to sound really muffled. actual underwater one sounds like. Alright, I think it's a good enough way to start with it, and if I put the wetness back to something more reasonable... <laughs> you go back to like the Fear Dungeon or the regular first dungeon, it's cool to check out. Oh, probably the second dungeon will be a good one to, to do once. I'm actually thinking I don't even need to do a whole set it up and data thing. I can just put I can put in those presets here in the kit sound. There's really no need to hook up like all 
the data interface. Well, I guess it would be preferable. Sounded good. I like it. Okay, well, I don't need to keep that open. I got the reverb presets here too, so I can just copy those whenever I feel like. Actually, I'll just, I'll just copy that over to my own kit sound thing and tweak the actual values. Oh, this is great, it's got its own little... Damn, it's nice and easy. Okay, great. Yeah, you can tweak that later. Um, what I want to do while I'm still on this stream is I'll just try this really quick. This is I'm not gonna take too long, but I want to do a little bit of panning for like enemy sounds getting in, and things are getting hit and stuff like profile play sound. Hold on, does kit sound even? Ah, see, I can't even set the panning right now. What's up, Pithlix? How's it been? And this is the only function I need to modify, though. Or I could add set panning. I'm just, I think play sound already has its own uh, setting of panning. Yeah, pan zero. Right. So you might as well pass in panning. Modify this function so you can just set it. Float panning equals zero. There was a punch on? People were punching each other? Doop, doop, doop. Whoa. Damn, man, that sounds crazy. It's intense when there's a fist fight. People coming to blows. Set pan panning. Yeah, we might as well have that function now. We need to check every call to kit play sound to make sure that anything that's using all the way to that index 
moves over its parameter. Yeah. Oh, the second parameter's loop. All right, so we gotta check all these references. This one's loop, oh yeah. By default, if it's only got one parameter, that's fine. But here, this one's using, oh, that's just formatting the sound, okay. This one. Those are good. Play sound, lightning. Those are good. Here's one. Wait, no, this is the volume mixed. Okay, so that's fine. Play diamond. Here we go. True volume. Ah, that also does not pass in the playthrough gamepad. Ah, here's one. Profile play sound, gotta change that too. Damn. That's pretty much gonna be a recompile of everything. Profile. Oh. Dang. Oh, wait, wait. Profile can just determine if it's going to... Uh, I messed up. Kit, play sound. They can determine its panning based on its id. So we've got a listener pause somewhere. We'll say we'll start with zero. So we can get this this ball rolling. This plays the seed sounds. Here's some turbulence. There's also a single sound. There's another single sound. Okay, that's the only instance really. It's just profile. Clear out my VIN. So profile. That's CPP where we're doing this, set the panning. And what else? Kid sound, modify it. We already did kid sound, really. It's basically it. This profile play sound needs to be modified. That's it. Wow. It's not too much of a change, really. Okay, so let's make sure that it still plays sounds like, oh wait, is it even going to change? But Yeah, yeah. Looks good. Okay, so if we start changing the panning, let's say we go half to the right. Does that mean all the sounds are going to sound halfway to the right? 
or yeah, it should. This should work. Hmm, wait a minute, it doesn't really sound... any different at all. Oh, that's definitely to the right now. Okay, I said to make it, make it more obvious. Oh, the reverb is what I'm hearing, even in the left channel. Okay, now everything that's played with an Ian, or we're gonna need. See, the Ian is one that makes a loop, I think. No, okay, the Ian is only saved if it starts to, if it is a loop. Okay, so it's safe for play sound to pass in its own Ian. What's up, Red Saint? How you doing? Hmm, man, this is gonna be a big change because all the instances that call play sound will have to be passing ears now. Yeah, man, I'm doing well. Definitely. Just working on some um, atmospheric sound effects and other little things to try and give Songbringer a little bit more atmosphere. Pretty much done for my done for the day. I gotta sit down and get some dinner and stuff. But um, I was planning with playing with panning here, and let's see if we could just get at least the sword when it hits stuff. Let's say when when something gets hurt, when it plays the hurt noise. This is it right here. Profile, profile, play sound, hurt. Don't loop, but do pass in this Eid so that we can pan it correctly based on wherever the Eid is compared to the listener pause. Who's got the, I think the music system has the listener pause now. Yeah, set listener pause. All right. So music system should also then have a function what called get panning for any vec2 position. And that's just based on the listener pause. And that way everything's all in one place for that. And damn it, I might as well make this a nice like uh, convenience method too, so you can call get panning for an EID as well. Yes, right on. Chunky steak pie, that sounds great. Yes.
So we'll use position components get method to get the EID position and then call music system get panning with that pause. Oh, this is actually past the pause. And then this. We'll call we'll call this float xd equals listener pause is x minus pause dot x now we want a wider a wide area of not a wide area but like a whatever I I guess it doesn't really matter We can just divide XD by the design res for the for a quick and dirty way to try this out. And then clamp F between negative one and one. Oh, and then profile system or profile. Needs a music system. All right, let's see how that goes. It should be applying a little bit of panning based on where something is compared to the listener, which is the hero. I think I might be doing the wrong way. Like right might be left or the other way around. Okay, I'm going to do this kind of the extreme way to try and make this super duper noticeable. I'm going to go if XD is less than zero. Actually, I got already got a function for that. XD equals sign XD. Yeah, so if it's greater than zero, it returns one. Otherwise, it returns negative one. Ah, uh, that's not that's not quite right. XD is greater than, if less than zero. Else, if XD is greater than zero, so if it is equal to zero, it stays. There, so that should make it extreme. And that way, when I throw my top hat to the left or whatever, we'll see if it actually is playing to the left. Might be exactly opposite or something. Or panning is opposite of what I thought it was. So that's playing in my left ear, and that's playing in my right ear. So it's either, let's check out what, what FMOD's um, panning thing is. So it's channel set pan. All right, so what? Yeah, negative one's left, one is right. Okay, so I must have that. 
this makes messed up with my XD or right whatever right here. I guess it is. Yeah, it's pause x minus listener pause x. Because that would create a positive, if you were, if the object was to the right of the player, that would create a positive number and hence a positive panning, which makes a lot more sense. Okay, it's still got the extremeness on it, so it's going to be, if, if it's to the right, it'll be fully to the right. Oh, if the E8 is zero, return zero. And if the, also if the pause is completely zero, no entity is like really ever there, so it just returns zero there. That'll make the door sounds and the other things that aren't set up yet for e for eids a lot better. Okay, good. We've got some panning going on in the ears a little bit. Now, I definitely don't want it to be that um, extreme, the negative one to one, so I'm just going to kind of like comment out this extremeness for a moment now that it's kind of set. And I'm going to leave it like that and get some dinner. So, there you go. That's it for this stream. Um, what I covered in this stream, if you're just catching this now, is um, adding a little bit of reverb to each of the levels and some custom reverb. So the out, the world sounds like it's outdoors. The caves sound like caves. The dungeons sound like stone and other stuff like that. Just a little bit, not too much. And then also I'm experimenting now with a little bit of panning. I'm going to make this have a huge dead zone kind of in the middle. And then things on the extreme of your audio will kind of be in a sine wave going like that with panning. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, y'all.